and good afternoon. It is time for our regular Friday Lunch and Learn, and today we're going to be talking about autoimmune disease, specifically Hashimoto's and Graves' disease, which both affect your thyroid. One is hypo, one is hyper, uh, but they're autoimmune diseases, and they are detected in your blood work by ANA antibodies. And so just because you have hyperthyroid or you have hypo thyroid doesn't mean that you have these immune issues. And so we're going to talk about how your gut microbiome plays a role in whether or not you get these diseases. So this is really important. Information is always power. And so one of the reasons why we do these Lunch and Learns is to give you information that you're not going to get on mainstream media. You're not going to get on social media, more than likely. And so we're going to be talking a little bit about that because there's a lot of social media stuff out there that is just not true. And so we want to separate the hype from the real. And we want you to be able to manage your health in the ways that are very, very beneficial for you. So as we've talked in the past, we have a gut microbiome, microbiome, small world, all right? So in your, from your mouth all the way to your bottom, you've got this long tube called the GI tract, and there are trillions of microbes that live in the gut, and they play a role in autoimmune diseases. Now, they can be parasites, they can be protozoan, they can be amoebas, they can be viruses, they can be bacteria, they can be all kinds of different things. All of us have them, all of us, as part of who we are. And so we've got these critters in there, but we need to keep these critters in a suppressed state so they don't overtake and overwhelm. And what we're finding with the research is showing that when people have these autoimmune diseases, they've got this bacteria that's way, way, way out of whack. Now, this particular report comes from a guy who is a Harvard Medical School trained uh, scientist, professor, and functional medical uh, practitioner himself. So he deals with autoimmune disease in a holistic way, as do we. If you saw our Tuesday testimonial this week, we had a, a wonderful testimony of a lady who her ANA antibodies, which is what denotates the uh, Hashimoto's disease or Graves' disease. In her case, it's Hashimoto's. When she started seeing me, her, Hashi her ANAs were like 600 and something. They should not be, they, they should not be detectable. All right. So they are now, we've been working together for about a year and they now are in the double digits. All right. So that is very, very good. She's well on her way to recovery. We still have some work to go. However, you know, Rome was not built in a day and you do not have an autoimmune disease today that you did not have tomorrow. It is years and months in the making. And so what we need to do is to find out what causes that and how we can reverse that and how we can get the body back to a healthy state. Now, when the scientists looked at people with these two autoimmune diseases, uh, uh, Graves' disease and Hashimoto's, they discovered that people with these conditions had microbiomes that were different than healthy people. So a healthy person is not somebody that has everything going in the right direction necessarily. It is somebody who is healthy enough that their body can ward off disease, that their body can manage whatever parasites, bacteria, protozoans, that kind of thing that are in the body. A unhealthy person does not have that ability. So distinct groups of bacteria have been associated with the various factors in thyroid function. So I'm going to show you, I'm going to change my screen just so you can see, these are all of the different bacteria that we can actually test here in the clinic. So give me a minute to get the screen to where it's readable, right? So we've got this screen and then this screen this screen. We've got pages and pages and pages of bacteria that we can test for. Now, in this particular uh, report that we have, they label uh, four, I think it's four different 
uh, bacteria. And because I don't have a Latin background, I'm going to just butcher them. So I'm going to make a note of them. So if you do have Hashimoto's, if you do have Graves' disease, we can test to see if you have these specific bacteria. But what they're finding, the scientists are finding that people with these autoimmune diseases have these kind of bacteria in an overabundance in their body. And the, the hypothesis is that these particular bacteria uh, attack the uh, thyroid gland. So having this information, your doctor should be able to deal with this with antibiotics and all that kind of thing. Now, I really don't like antibiotics. You know how we are here. Why don't we like antibiotics? We don't like antibiotics because antibiotics, yes, they kill the bad bacteria, but they also kill the good bacteria. And you have to have good bacteria in abundance to overwhelm or to keep in check the bad bacteria. So when we are born, we've got 80% good bacteria, 20% bad bacteria. Whenever we have a course of antibiotics, that pushes everything down. We have no bacteria. Just like in your garden, when you clean up the winter mess and you plant your beautiful spring flowers, your beautiful spring flowers are here, but if you don't do anything else, the weeds are going to come and come and come and come and take over your garden, or at least that's what happens at my house if we neglect it. And so you don't want to neglect it. So when we've had antibiotics, we definitely want to replant the good bacteria because it is only the good bacteria that will take care of the bad bacteria. So we want to make sure that we do this. So addressing gut health is an up down or north south approach what does that mean well that means most in your belly okay in your small intestine and your large intestine is where most of your bacteria live you have to supplement right north down okay top down north south you've got to supplement appropriately in order to get the good bacteria in the small intestine and the large intestine where it belongs now, I will tell you, if you're buying your probiotics or your flora from the big box store, you are wasting your money. Why is that? Because most of the time, the strains are very, very cheap, and they do not, dis they do not survive the hydrochloric acid that is in your stomach. Now, we all need hydrochloric acid because um, that's what helps us digest our food. However... On the flora, most of the flora that's produced today is very, very fragile. That's why they tell you to keep it in the refrigerator. If you take that orally, then what's going to happen is the stomach acid is going to chew it up and you're not going to be able to get the benefit of it. So we want to be looking for probiotics and uh, postbiotics, all that kind of stuff that are in spore form. Why is that? Because they are in spore form. Go back to your fourth grade. Uh, biology class, when they're in spore form, they are encapsulated and they can make it through the hydrochloric acid into the small intestine where they will open up, they will repopulate, and they will do all of those kind of things that we need to do, all right? So that's really, really important if we're going to be going after these autoimmune diseases that we repopulate the gut with this good bacteria. So addressing it is, as I said, very, very complex. Improving and repairing gut health is the foundation of autoimmune disease. Now, anytime you see a Tuesday testimonial or uh, anything like that from us, you, you'll see that in 90% of the time, we start with a gut reset program. Why is that? Because it is the gut and dysfunction of the gut that leads to this dysbiosis. Dysbiosis means um, dysfunction of life. So probiotics means for life. Antibiotics mean against life, right? So you take antibiotics to get rid of bacteria that is negative for you. You take probiotics to replant the good bacteria in your gut. There used to be a saying years ago, I don't know anybody that uses it today, but it would, it went like weed, feed, weed, seed, and feed. You weed out the bad bacteria, you seed the good bacteria, and then you propagate that good bacteria so that you're able to grow that good bacteria and you're able to reset the balance of 80% good and 20% bad. We're always going to have some bad. We always are. That's just how it's going to be. However, 
we can do something to create the good bacteria. Now, we've got clinically, we've got some conditions that ruin your gut bacteria. One is insufficient stomach acid. Now, as I said a while ago, hydrochloric acid is what your body makes in order to break down the food that you eat. This is why chewing, mastication, is very, very important because it gets the food into very small pieces so that hydrochloric acid can go to work on it in your stomach and break down the food even more before it passes from the stomach into the small intestine where it is absorbed. So if you have low stomach acid, you're not going to be digesting that food. That food is going to be too large to be digested. And so what is it going to do? It's going to ferment. Ferment, that's what you do with beer, that's what you do with wine, that's what you do with sauerkraut, all right, those are all those things. And so when this food begins to ferment, it puts off gas and you get symptoms such as gas and bloating. So are gas and bloating natural functions of the body? Well, they can be, right? If you eat something that's bad and it puts off a gas, you want to be able to get rid of it. But we don't want it to be something that disrupts your life. And I I will tell you, probably 90% of the people that come in to see me tell me that they've got gas and bloating and they're very, very uncomfortable. Poor gallbladder function is another cause of dysbiosis. Why is that? That is because the gallbladder is a little purse. It holds the bile that your liver makes. When you have a fried or fatty content meal, the gallbladder releases the bile and the bile goes into the body and it um, emulsifies the fat that you're eating. Fat that you're eating is too large of a molecule for you to be able to absorb it. So what happens if you've got gallbladder insufficiency? Then you wear that fat molecule because the body doesn't know what else to do it. So it just pushes it into the antipose cells. I don't know why doctors don't tell patients who have had their gallbladders removed that they need to take ox bile every day of their life in order to uh, overcompensate for not having that gallbladder in the body. And so this is something that if this is you, if you have no gallbladder, if you will take bile salts with every meal, you will find that most likely you will lose between 15 and 20 pounds in a month without even trying. Why? because your body is emulsifying that fat and you're not pushing it into those antipose cells, all right? Enzyme secretion. So your pancreas secretes enzymes. Enzymes are the chemical messengers that break down your food and they are catalysts to turn those nutrients into antioxidants and different other things that our body needs so it can function properly. When we get older, like after the age of 30, our pancreas may not be producing enough enzymes, and so we don't have that catalyst to turn the food into the chemicals that we need in order to function properly. So we do recommend that anybody over the age of 30 take a digestive enzyme with their meals. I take one, especially with my heavier meals. Sometimes if I just have a banana, I don't do one. However, it, with my heavy meals, my cooked foods, I always take an, a, a digestive enzyme because I'm over 30. I guess y'all didn't know that, but I'm over 30. In the small intestine, there is a condition called overgrowth of small intestinal bacteria. It's called SIBO, small intestine of, uh, bacterial overgrowth. Okay, SIBO, we're gonna talk about that in a minute. And we can have fungal patterns or parasitic infections. We can have leaky gut. Leaky gut is an increased permeability of the gut lining. Now, does that mean your gut lining has holes in it? No, it doesn't mean that. So think of your gut lining as really, really tight. You can't see air through my fingers, right? So if I have intestinal permeability issues, the junctions are gonna be like this, and undigested food particles are gonna slip through that it's going to go into the bloodstream. Your bloodstream is going to say, oh, we got to have an alert here because we've got invaders because those proteins are not supposed to be seen in the bloodstream. And so it's going to mount an autoimmune response or it's going to mount an immune response. And if that is not dealt with properly, it can turn into an autoimmune dysfunction. Also, 
dysfunctions in motility, that means the uh, the regular sequence of bowel movements, all right? So we've talked about this before. If you eat two to three meals a day, you should be moving your bowels two to three days, two to three times a day the next day. Why is that? Because we want you to have an 18 to 24 hour bowel transit time from the time you intake food to the time you get rid of the waste products. We want that to be 18 to 24 hours. So there are people, and we can tell this by looking at your eye, believe it or not, your eye is the window of your soul, and it also is the window into your DNA. And so we can look in your eye and we can see different signs that you are born with, not defects, not anything wrong with you, you are perfect, but these signs will tell us if we have a, um, a hyper-functioning bowel or if we have a bowel that's just a little bit lazy and it needs a little bit of help. So this can lead to constipation, diarrhea, inflammation, and a whole lot more. So um, if you ever think about those Pepto-Bismol commercials, right? If that describes you, then you probably have this dysbiosis in your gut, and we need to really work on that so that we can help you. So a healthy microbiome, so all the bugs, the belly bugs, being in sync there is going to be good for a condition called oral tolerance. Now, oral tolerance refers to your immune system ability to tolerate the foods that you eat. It is the body's way of appropriately responding to foods and protecting itself from the harmful ingredients. When someone loses oral, oral tolerance, they develop sensitivities to certain foods. So if you are sensitive to foods, if you are intolerant to foods, that means your gut microbiome is not right. So just want to digress into just a little bit of preaching here. And I say that with all jest. But the way God made our bodies, you know, when he made Adam and Eve, he put them in the garden. And he said, everything that I have made that grows in the garden, you may have. So what grows in the garden? Fruits and vegetables. So if you are allergic to fruits and vegetables or you break out with an allergy, with fruits and vegetables, that is a sign that your belly bugs are not good. And so what we want to do with that is we want to go in there and rearrange the furniture so that you're able to tolerate those things. It's my personal belief that if it is something that God made, it is something that everybody should be able to eat. And if you're not able to eat it, it is because your microbiome is not uh, correct. So... When this oral tolerance is disrupted and it's not repaired, then the body's immune system becomes confused and it starts attacking itself. It's not tolerant to the food that you have and then it's not tolerant, your immune system is not tolerant to who you are. So both Hashimoto's and Graves' disease attack your thyroid and your thyroid lives right here. It's a little butterfly shape gland that lives there and we want it to live there because it's very very important to temperature regulation weight management all that kind of stuff so the gut microbiome pays a lot of attention to that and so we need to understand how that works it helps your immune system promote a balanced approach to the foods that you intake so how do we do that how do we make sure that our microbiome is where it needs to be. Well, one thing that we can do is we can ensure that we eat a wide variety of plant uh, produce foods. So this uh, functional medical doctor that we're reading his report, he says that he encourages his patients to have 20, 20, 2 different plant fibers in their diet in a day. Now that's, that is excessive. And I don't mean excessive like you shouldn't do that. That's way more than most people do. Most people will have, oh, four or five fruits or vegetables in a day. And he's recommending that you have 20, but you have them in bite size servings, 20 bite size servings so you're not overwhelmed. He said it's just a spoonful and you only need about a tablespoon of each variety to feed the good bacteria in addition to your regular fiber intake. Now, how much fiber do you need in a day? Well, you need approximately 
25 grams of fiber or more. Now, most of us do not get that. Why is that? Because our food here in the United States is denatured and it's processed and all of the fiber is removed. So look, for example, and I love Uncle Ben's rice. So don't anybody like write to me and say that I'm being mean to Uncle Ben because I love Uncle Ben. Uh, we've got, you know, Uncle Ben's rice right down the road here in the Texas area. However, they strip the bran off of the rice, which the bran is the fiber. So white rice has very, I think it's like 0.6 grams of fiber per serving, whereas red rice or black rice has over four grams of fiber. So you want to do that. You want to limit your consumption of meat and dairy products from animals raised on antibiotics. So this here in the United States would be all of your commercial farming. Why is that? Because our industrial farming uses antibiotics to fatten up the animals faster so they go to market faster and they're able to turn over their profits so they're able to make more money in the year. And nobody is grudging the farmers their money, so don't hear that. However, when we eat food, meat, um, eggs, cheeses, butter, milk, all that kind of thing, when we eat them from animals that have been force fed these antibiotics, then we actually get those antibiotics in our system. And what do antibiotics do? They flatten the good bacteria. So we don't want to do that. Now, if you know me at all, you know that I'm a carnivore. I love my steak. I love my red meat. And I don't apologize for that. That's why my body functions the best. I know exactly how I feel when I have a big red juicy steak, all right, all the vegans and the vegetarians, you're just going to have to give me grace because I give you grace, all right, everybody has to eat the way their body feels the best, and my body feels the best with animal protein. However, I make sure that my source is uh, no antibiotics and no hormones. Now, why, is, why no hormones? Well, because as human beings, we have our own hormones. And if you're ingesting meat pumped with hormones, and again, they do that to, to get the, the animals to be better, to be healthy, um, then what that's going to do is they're going to, um, you're going to get those, those hormones that's going to make your body not so good. You want to avoid alcohol, excessive alcohol consumption. Why is that? Because negative uh, it's, it's a negative effect on your gut microbiome. So they don't tell you what excessive is. Uh, I think, however, this, the, uh, the standards are more than two drinks for women, more than four drinks for men. I'm not quite sure. Uh, that seems a little excessive in and of itself. But you can go and look under, you know, you can Google it or whatever. What is excessive alcohol intake? It disrupts your gut. Minimize antibiotics as a medical treatment unless absolutely necessary for the same reason that we don't have them in our meat and dairy products. So think about your fish tank. Everybody has seen an aquarium. You may have never have had one, but you see them in the restaurants and different things like that. If you have ever owned an aquarium, you know that your aquarium is going to produce algae. They all do. So we buy algae eater fish, algae eater snails, all that kind of stuff. We put it in the aquarium and it keeps that glass free from that algae. However, we also could take a cup of bleach and pour that into the water in the aquarium. And what would happen? Well, it would kill the algae, but it would also kill the fish. This is what happens when we take antibiotics, right? We don't want to do that because it messes up our gut bacteria. We want to choose our produce, our fruits and our vegetables to be organic because they will have no herbicide or pesticides, which also affect the gut microbiome. So diet is your primary pathway to health. However, there are supplements that you can do as well. So some supplements that you need are omega-3 fatty acids. Now you find this in fish, you find this in emu and algae oil, and it is important for maintaining a healthy balance of essential fatty acids that promote your T cell regulation. Now, that's a lot of medical words. What is T cell regulation? T cell regulation are cells that come from 
your bone marrow up to the thymus gland and the immune system uses those to suppress a, an immune response so that your body's not getting confused. They regulate your immune response. Now, glutathione is the master antioxidant that helps dampen inflammation in the gut. Inflammation in the gut inhibits diversity of bacteria, and so it is important to reduce it. Now, again, I'm going to show you the Pharmanex scanner right here, Pharmanex. And the reason we have this is because we can do a 30-second test to find out if you are absorbing the right kinds of fruits and vegetables so that you're able to have this antioxidant activity in your body. So you should be around 90,000. Most people come in, they're between 20 and 10,000, all right? And that's not a good thing. That means that the gut is messed up and they do not have the antioxidants that they need in order to combat your free radicals and to combat the aging process. So we want to be able to make sure that we take antioxidants. We've got vitamins that are guaranteed to make sure that you have those um, antioxidants in there. But we also have glutathione, and the best glutathione is liposomal glutathione, and we have that as well. Short-chain fatty acids are what your body makes as a result of the fermentation of dietary fiber. So if you're not having any dietary fiber, then you're not going to be making these short-chain fatty acids. And you need these short-chain fatty acids because they support your gut health repair leaky gut, and regulate gut inflammation. A wide variety of plant fibers is advised. However, people who already have stomach issues have a hard time with plant fiber. So if that's you, you might have inflammatory bowel disease, irritable bowel syndrome, SIBO, or leaky gut, as we talked about before. If you have had gastrointestinal surgeries, you've had your gallbladder removed, or you've had a bypass in your stomach or the sleeve or whatever that messes up your digestion. It messes up the flow of chemicals in the digestive process, and you're going to have some trouble with that. So that will lead to autoimmunity, and those people need to avoid lectins, nightshades, and oxalates. All right, now, there is a guy on social media, he's a medical doctor, and he says everybody in the world should avoid lectins. I'm just going to tell you, I do not agree with him. People that have autoimmune disease, yes, they do. But all the rest of us who do not have autoimmune disease, the lectins are not detrimental to our health. So we want to make sure that we manage, we're able to manage these autoimmune diseases. It is a complex and ongoing process. The doctors will tell you that it is incurable. However, if your ANA antibody test goes down to nothing, right, I think I think the reference range is under five or something like that, you're good. You don't have an autoimmune disease. And we have seen that happen. Are we attacking the ANA antibodies? No, we're not attacking them. What we're doing is we are restoring your health function so your immune system knows what to do to, in order to rid itself of those little critters that are bothering you. So Hippocrates says all disease begins in the gut. Most people do not pay attention to what they eat. When they come in, we put them on a gut protocol and they are absolutely amazed at how their body responds to that. If you have an autoimmune issue, you are going to respond negatively to stress. And who does not have stress these days? It is a stressful world we live in, and so we want to make sure that we mitigate the stress as much as possible. So I appreciate you uh, joining me for this. Hopefully you have some really good insight into your gut microbiome and how you can help repair it. I gave you quite a few suggestions here. And if you need our help, we are here for you, as always, it's not that hard, but it does take discipline on your part in order to follow through with the protocol. Now, today is November the 10th. It is the National Observance of Veterans Day. And you see I've got my little 
my little flags and my little oh. ribbon there because we absolutely love our veterans. My husband is a veteran and then we have several family members that are veterans. So we want to speak to you and say thank you for your service. We would not be who we are in this country without our veterans. And so we love you and we honor you. Uh, go out and celebrate your veterans because they need it. It is the weekend. What do we do on the weekend? We do a lot of self-care. Why is that? Because during the week, we're so busy ministering to other people, serving other people in our regular day jobs that we may not have time to take care of ourselves. So at the weekend, what we want you to do is take time for self-care because you are important and you cannot pour from an empty cup. Thank you for liking. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for commenting. I appreciate the time that you give us and I will see you next week.